Wheat is a globally strategic crop. To achieve consistently high yields, it's essential to protect the plant's leaves from disease, in particular, the flag leaf. To maximize the potential of a leaf, we need to look at the transport of resources into and out of the leaf and the process of photosynthesis. Disruption to any part of this inner working will reduce yield potential. Cells inside the leaf contain chloroplasts, specialized cell subunits that help to produce glucose, an essential building block of plant growth and grain yield. Ultimately, high yields rely on four key factors. Water and nutrients, which are brought up from the plant's roots through the xylem system. Carbon dioxide, which enters the leaf epidermis through small pores called stomata. Sunlight, which is converted inside the chloroplasts into chemical energy. And transport of sucrose away from the leaf via the phloem system to areas of active growth, including the developing ear of grains. These four key factors can be significantly disrupted by fungal disease infections, such as septoria or rusts. A septoria infection begins when airborne or rain-splashed spores land on the plant's leaves, often from older infected leaves further down. The spores sprout hyphae, which grow and penetrate the plant through the stomata. In the early phase of infection, there are no visible symptoms, but inside the leaf, the disease's hyphae are absorbing nutrients, and especially sugars, passively from the host plant. As the network of hyphae growth builds up, it has a disastrous physical effect on the leaf's internal structures, disrupting cells and blocking the plant's xylem and phloem transport systems. Applications of fungicides at this phase may stop the disease from spreading, but the damage to the plant's tissue has already begun and the impact on yield cannot be reversed. As the hyphae mature, growth switches to a non-passive, necrotrophic phase. When plant cells around the hyphae are destroyed, this leads to leaf cell collapse and death, extending the damage to the plant tissue. The first external indications of disease start to appear. As more cells die, the leaf area available to absorb sunlight and carbon dioxide is reduced. Disruption of the leaf structure also leads to excess water loss. In the final stage of the septoria cycle, fruiting bodies full of spores are formed. These spores can become airborne or most frequently splashed onto adjacent leaves and plants. With rust infections, the disease cycle is much shorter, with more superficial damage to the leaf, causing increased water loss. This can also lead to leaves rolling up, further reducing the area available for capturing sunlight. Protecting a healthy wheat crop from the devastating effects of septoria and rust infections is essential to maintaining high yield. Solatinol is distributed over the leaf surface as a fine spray. Unique surfactants encourage the spray droplets to stick and spread over the leaf surface. This maximizes both plant coverage and the amount of solatinol available for uptake. The product is absorbed into the leaf and distributed by both translaminar movement and distinct sideways movement, especially in the direction of the leaf tip. Unlike some other active ingredients, this movement results in a more uniform distribution throughout the leaf tissue. Solatinol is absorbed by the developing hyphae through direct contact, either as it grows on the leaf surface or during its early growth inside the leaf tissue after penetrating through the stomata. The hyphae's energy is produced in its mitochondria subcellular organelles that use the host plant's own glucose oxidation in order to support growth within the host. Glucose oxidation produces cellular energy. This requires oxygen consumption in a process termed respiration. 
One of the crucial intermediate stages of this complex energy production process, starting with glucose, is the formation of succinic acid. Succinic acid is oxidized by an enzyme known as complex II, succinate dehydrogenase, to produce fumaric acid and electrons. Once the complex II has transferred its succinic acid-derived electrons to the respiratory channel, oxidized fumaric acid is released to continue the energy creation process, leaving the complex II free to accept more succinic acid in a continuing cycle of energy production. The electron transfer process is efficiently blocked by selatinol, which has both a very good physical fit with this enzyme and also binds strongly to the complex II enzyme. The mitochondria are left unable to function, starving the hyphae of the energy they need to survive. Due to its distribution both on and inside the leaf, and because of its high intrinsic activity, Selatinol is highly protectant, preventing infection at the initial stages of disease development in order to maximize leaf productivity. By preventing the disease developing before it can cause damage, the water and nutrients can flow freely into the leaves. Leaf tissue is protected, maintaining photosynthetic potential and preventing excessive water loss. The production of sugars necessary for growth and yield is sustained and sugars can be freely transported from the leaf to the developing ear for maximum yield. Selatinol's more complete leaf protection allows the plant to fulfil its high yielding potential.